Hi, Nomad Adventure Biker here again. Today we're bringing out the big guns. Uh, we we're in Townley Hall in Drada, site of the Battle of the Boyne. And today we have a Honda Varadero, or XL1000. Um, so let's go take it for a test drive, see how it how it rides. But first, I got to tell you about this seat. This is a custom seat, and it makes it a good bit lower than the stock one, and boy does it make a difference. Um, it ha has gel inserts on it. I'll get back to that later. Now, this one has an alarm and an immobiliser. Honda started producing these in 1999. Um, it used the Firestorm engine, the VTR 1000, not to be confused with the uh, SP1 now. Different engine altogether. And it uh, retuned it and put it in this, the Varadero. Uh, the 99 one is different in the gearbox has five gears and it's carbed not fuel injected like this one this is uh, 2003 which was the first year the car or the fuel injected ones came out um, and it made a significant difference to the uh, fuel economy and with a six gear it, uh, it it needs it to be honest with you um, I've ridden this bike um, in mainland Europe. I've toured on it. Uh, did some big miles on it a few years back, but not on this one. Um, the one I had had the stock seat, and there's a fair bit of difference. Um, I think if you're five foot nine or below that, um, I think a lowered seat is a fantastic idea. The guy who did this one, as far as I know, his name is Tony Archer and he's in England. And he made a really good job. There's two gel inserts on, on this. And it makes it way more easier to control. Um, and is supremely comfortable on this bike. Um, I found while touring two up and with luggage, tent, everything on it, I found it extremely top heavy. Uh, the one I had also had engine bars on it and a centre stand. So that added to what already is a 264kg bike. So that's pretty heavy. But this thing handles really well with the, the, the lower seat height. It makes it a lot easier for slow speed manoeuvring. Oh, let's see how she performs on the twisties. shares the uh, same design as the Capanord, the Aprilia Capanord, which incidentally the uh, designer of this bike, or sorry, the designer of the Capanord moved to uh, Honda in 2002. Um, as I said, it has a six-speed box. It's a usual familiar Honda first gear clunk, but after that things really smooth out. And it's a sweet ride. Power-wise, it makes nearly exactly, on paper, the same amount of power as the uh, the new Africa Twin, which is 94 brake horsepower. I think there's only one or two newton meters of torque in the difference. And uh, to be fair, this engine feels a lot more punchier than the Africa Twin, where the Af Africa Twin is a more tractable engine. And um, there's no shortage of power on this, and it will chug along all day with luggage uh, and a passenger, no problem, 80 miles an hour down the motorway in France, and um, with no problems. It's only where the roads got really tight in the mountains, uh, 
that I noticed I got passed by quite a few cyclists <laughs> while I was taking my time going around turns. But I don't think that would happen had I had this seat. Um, I can get uh, nearly my boat feet on the ground. And uh, there's a few nice extras on this as well, which would also help the, the riding experience. It has an MRA touring screen on this. As you can see, it has a gear indicator. Um, Garmin sat nav on this. Uh, it doesn't have a center stand, but to save weight, and which is a better idea, it has a Scott Oiler, so it saves you weight. A lot of people put engine bars on this bike. I would personally if the seat was higher. Um, have I dropped mine? I have. I dropped mine a few years ago uh, at a filling station. Didn't do any harm. The bars did, a, did the job. Um, the wind protection on this is excellent. It, um, there's no buffeting whatsoever with this MRA touring screen. Uh, it's just perfect. Even with my helmet open, it's, it's bearable at 100 kilometers an hour. The tank range on this is massive. It does 260 miles before the fuel light comes on. It doesn't have a fuel gauge, which is kind of surprising. Uh, but I'd forgive it because of the range on the bike. The range is just fantastic, and you, it's exactly what you need when you're doing big distances. Uh, as I said, weight-wise and, and load-carrying uh, capability on this bike is brilliant. Um, the suspension on it is more road bias. It has cast aluminium wheels, so I, bringing it off-road is a no-no for me anyway. You just there's no point. It is a traily styled bike. Uh, for touring, but it is a it is a tour. Be under no illusions. The front suspension is non-adjustable. The rear the, the rear is adjustable, all right. And you can adjust it on the fly down here on the right hand side with a, with a knob. Uh, to be honest with you, I thought it was a little harsh the the front suspension on it. Although that's after getting off the Africa Twin, and it has pretty long travel suspension on that bike. Uh, but a couple of inches more travel wouldn't have been any harm. I'm not sure about uh, progressive springs, maybe that sorts that out. But I, I don't have a problem with the way the bike handles. Um, and, and the power, I don't have a problem with either. It uh, pulls away no problem, which I will demonstrate to you now. Without any, uh, without any hassle. Enough power to get you out of trouble and into trouble. There are Tourance tyres on this uh, bike. And I can hear them. They're a little bit little bit noisy. Um, I would change them for something maybe like a Pirelli uh, STs. Something like that. Something more road bias. Because to me the Tourance is they're kind of a pretend off-road for looks only. and I'm not too good on them. Uh, but as you can see, she handles perfectly on the twisties, no problem at all. The weight fairly disappears uh, once you get moving. Um, and it is, a it is supremely comfortable, this bike to ride. The hand guards give ample protection from the wind. Uh, this one has uh, heated grips. And it also has an old school automatic choke, or sorry, uh, manual choke. Uh, for the fuel injection, injection system. Nice, easy to read uh, dash. Has a trip meter, which it needs because there's no fuel gauge, as I said. It has a clock, analog, rev counter, and a speedometer. Uh, the lights are very decent on it. Uh, some people fit extra driving lights when they put the crash bars on. Uh, look pretty cool too. Uh, some people think this bike is pig ugly, I've read in some of the reviews, I don't think it's bad at all. This one has a nice deep red colour scheme, uh, which I'd say you will find on the uh, ST1100. It reminds me of that colour scheme. These bikes were built in Spain, along where the Transalp was built. 
But this is a really good bike. This is a really good touring bike. It has uh, plenty of poke, plenty of mid-range. Uh, and like I said, it will pull luggage all day long, two up, without being too thirsty. The uh, fuel consumption on this is, ar again, around, like, most of the bikes I've been reviewing lately, it's about 40-ish to the gallon. Which is not too bad. Again, the tank range is just fantastic on this bike. Really, really, it's a, it's a proper touring tank range. Mirrors are pretty good. They're old school round, but they do a decent job. There's no buzziness. You can see out through them. And uh, yeah, it's just it's a, it's a good good all round. It's probably an underrated bike. This uh, overlooked by many. But I, I like it, I think it's a great bike. Obviously, after buying one, I, I did my research on them. And um, it did exactly what I needed it to do. Two up touring, mainland Europe, luggage, and a good time. And that I did have on one of these. So, there you have it. There's my review of the Honda XL1000 Varadero.